the other thing is, and I'm going to venture off into theory here. We've been in operational fact. But I see a lot of reason to believe that the zero rates are actually deflationary, not inflationary. Because, again, Japan has a very strong currency after all these years. And so you look for the channels where zero rates would be deflationary rather than inflationary. One is on the supply side because the cost of inventory is very low, so you don't get the kind of bottlenecks. And the uh, it keeps the cost of production and new investment down by having a zero rate policy. So you have positive supply side effects. On the demand side, it takes the all the nations are net savers, and the larger the budget deficit, the larger the net savers. So lower rates reduce income directly. And the other thing that tends to happen is bank net interest margins tend to grow as rates go down, which transfers income from savers with some reasonably high marginal propensity to consume to banks that have zero propensity to consume and reduces interest income. So through the interest income channels, there seems to be I, I have a lot of reason to think that zero interest rates are actually deflationary. And if you look at currencies that have zero interest rates, such as the, the uh, UMKC buckaroos and my cards that I tell you, you'd have to get out the door. Paying interest on buckaroos is not going to increase the value from $5, from $15 to $20. We know where the value comes from. It comes from the monopolist setting price. And, and the currency is a case, is a public monopoly. And at the end of the day, the value of the currency is what you have to do to get it from the, from the monopolist, from the government. So, in other words, price is, the price level is necessarily a function of prices paid by the government when it spends at the point of spending. And spending policies have a whole lot more to do with the price level than